Hi, Steve Bonacontri from SOA Consulting Services, continuing our Angular 4 tutorial. Today we're going to talk about dependency injection and how useful it is in Angular 4 programming. Okay, what is dependency injection? Well, first, in order to discuss dependency injection, let's talk about inversion of control. IOC. It's a framework which provides objects as needed. And dependency injection is one particular implementation of IOC. Declarations are used in code to request required objects needed. Angular instantiates objects and inst injects them into constructors. The benefits are you get loosely coupled components and services. You get reusable uh, objects uh, that are testable outside uh, the components. And we're going to talk about two injector types initially. One of them is an application injector, and the other one is a component injector. But there are others which we'll, we'll talk about at the end of this tutorial. OK, so an application injector. Uh, loosely speaking, uh, when you have an application module which uses a root application component as well as other custom components like user component and users, uh, etc., um, you have an application module can uh, declare a provider list. And in the provider list, um, you can say uh, this is a user service which uh, I'm going to provide to my application module. And uh, that allows um, that allows all the components and other modules to use that particular service. Um, okay, so so basically, it tells uh, um, it, it tells Angular to use the user service um, for components in the application when needed. And that is that any component can inject the user service into their constructor. And the user service uh, appearing here is actually referred to as a token. It's a name of the object of value to be injected. In this case, uh, by default, if, if, if the um, uh, use class is not provided in the provider's declaration, then Angular will look for a user service class and instantiate an object of that particular type and, and use that to inject into the component's constructor. Um, so so uh, loosely speaking, you can start defining providers in components, um, or you could define it at an app module level. Okay, and, and you could also do things like, okay, I'm going to have all my components use this user service um, using the user service class to instantiate that object within my app module. And if I want to override that for a particular component, I de could declare the provider at the component level. Okay, so the um, component injector... I'm allowed to def declare providers at the comp at the component level as well, and in that case, uh, the component injector will inject the particular service um, that that particular uh, component is pointing to. So this particular provider's declaration says, "Here's a mobile service token." Look for a mobile service class definition and instantiate that mobile service class to create an object to be injected into my constructor of my function. Okay, so note that 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 in, in the green here, providers mobile service is really shorthand for provide the mobile service and use the class mobile service. And so the bottom line is you can use any class you want because the provider statement of mobile services, mobile service, is really using the mobile service as a token to point to the class to instantiate. 
And um, okay, so you could also use factory or use value um, in in providers. Okay, so uh, so a value example would be um, provide the is dev environment uh, uh, constant with a value of true. Okay, so so uh, um, if I define this this value, let's say at a module level, then using um, the, the use factory, I could do something like this. I could say provide mobile service, that is mobile service, this mobile service is my token to point to my mobile service. But I'm going to use a factory, and I use the fat arrow operator. It says, "Well, if is dev um, is true, use the the mock mobile service. Else, mo use the mobile service uh, or real mobile service." And then I say, "Oh well, this factory depends on is dev environment, which I defined in the in the in the previous view graph as as true. Uh, so this particular code would use the mock mobile service." Now, if I redefine it to false, it would use the real mobile service. So anyway, this mobile service that gets injected into the constructor can switch, in, if, depending on this is dev environment, their value that's provided. So, so just keep in, keep in mind that you're, you, you could do things at a, at a module level, and at module level, you're doing things at a component level. I'm going to go through some examples and show you differences. Okay, so what are the, what are the patterns? Okay, so so here I have uh, pictorially. I just want to show you, you know, uh, what what we're talking about. We have an app module. We have a, a an injector, and and I could be using a component injector to inject my user service into my user component. Now, I don't really, maybe I do subconsciously think about which injector I'm using, but the bottom line is, if the components annotation has a provider with a service, that's the one it's gonna use. If it doesn't, it'll use the app module in, uh, in, in um, provider. So, so don't let it confuse you too much. Okay, another pattern would be Okay, I'm going to inject the HTTP service uh, into the user service, and the user service is going to get injected to the user component. And of course, um, uh, oh, so this 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 could easily represent the factory where. In test mode, I'm using a mock service. In in production, I'm using a real service, um, and and um, and there's an injector which which can inject one or the other. And here's some DI uh, uh, patterns. Um, these are the ones I mostly use. Um, if you want a component template. That's a self-contained component template. And you say, well, wait a minute, I'm designing this. It's the component template, which, which is going to use an HTTP service to make a web service call. And then I'm going to get back. Um, uh, let's suppose in the constructor, I, I do an HTTP get. And then in, in maybe in a NIP method, I subscribe to that. I I get the results and put it in my variables in my component, set the state of my component, and then the, then the template renders that. It's a self-contained component which links to some, some service. Um, you, can, you, can, you can use that particular pattern where the component calls the HTTP service. Now, now notice I didn't use a custom service here. I'm using an Angular 4 HTTP service uh, which 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 gets injected um, automatically within my application, um, and 
and you could you could you could do that or you could say well wait a minute I want this service to be more reusable I want to be able to test the HTTP outside the component um, in that case you might use a custom service that calls the HTTP service and that would be this diagram down here you inject the HTTP the angular 4 HTTP service into the custom service you inject the the custom service into the component um, uh, using syntax in Angular 4 and like I said I'm trying to move away of which I'm trying to move away from which injector as as long as it works and I know which service I'm using which service definition I use I'm using um, I'm, I'm okay okay so let's let's just move on okay so there are more injector types and I don't want to get too confusing because at the ones I just described you know, when you start doing Angular 4, you, you use those quite a bit. But but um, there is a root injector. The Angular application has a root injector available to all of its modules. There's a subroot injector. Lazy loaded modules use a direct child of the root in uh, injector. And then there's a component injector. The component can have uh, its own injector. And there's actually an injector hierarchy, which... Um, you can you can look at and determine if you really need to know which injector you're using you could play around with some of these things okay so let's let's go to some examples okay we're going to talk about three examples one of them is a simple dependency injection of um, of a user service which goes and gets a user um, and that's the simplest form of a of a, of a factory and then there's a, 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 another DI example where we, we talk about component providers, module providers, and I'll just briefly mention uh, how you can use abstract um, classes or interfaces in, in your injection. Um, and then there is a, uh, a factory provider we're going to take a look at. So let's, um, let's move to the next um, tutorial which is going to describe the code.